Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Kick your feet up as I give a quick recap of the final season, How to Get Away with Murder. Season 6, episode 11, entitled The Reckoning. We're going to go over the key points and new clues. That's all coming up next. It's Bunny. Annalise in the opening scene, she's in a holding cell and she keeps hearing a baby crying in the background and she's desperately trying to get to this baby but the closer she gets to the baby she's being held back. We then see that she's just having a really bad nightmare. She's not in a holding cell. She's at home on house arrest and her mother is laying next to her. Later, Annalise talks with Bonnie and Frank to let them know what's going on. And Frank is saying, hey, you're getting help from T on this in this situation. And maybe you shouldn't trust her because she helped Laurel get away. And Annalise keeps them afloat of all of the details that she knows concerning this information of her being on house arrest. And she says, hey, everything that's going on with the FBI and them building up this case, I understand if you want out of this. I understand if you want to go into hiding. But of course, Bonnie and Frank aren't having it and they want to stick it out. Asher's sister suspects that Gabriel killed her brother because from his cell phone and the cell phone records, she got a phone call from Gabriel, Gabriel's phone. But Gabriel claims that he had nothing to do with it. Asher calls his sister and says, hey, I think Michaela, Connor and Oliver, they figured out that I'm speaking with the FBI. And we see this information the night that he died. So we do know that he called his sister. Now in the later scene, Bonnie is afraid that Frank will always have Laurel in the back of his mind. That if she pops up, he'll be quick to be on her side. And Frank assures her that he is with Bonnie. He chose her and she shouldn't have to worry about if Laurel comes back into the picture. With the court case, Annalise wants to defend herself and Price tries to tell her, hey, you can't defend yourself in the court of law. No matter how much of a good lawyer you are, you probably at some point will need co-counsel. As Annalise is talking with the judge and the other prosecuting attorney, Price brings up some really good points and the judge is just like, okay, who is this? I don't see your name anywhere on this documentation. Are you representing or are you co-counsel with Annalise? Annalise agrees and now Price is co-counsel in helping with this case. Now, Annalise believes that the FBI has a deeper motive in surprising certain details in the case. More details about Asher's last night. The night of his death, he receives a text message saying that a car will arrive in 15 minutes. Asher takes several sips, sips of alcohol and then takes a video of himself recording a message. But we don't know the message at this time. So Annalise's mother, she visits Nathan because she wants to know why he's being so abrasive to Annalise. She reminds him that, hey, if it wasn't for Annalise, you'd be in jail. My daughter actually went to the Supreme Court to help your dad. You are taking out the frustration of the situation that happened with your dad out on Annalise, and it's not a good thing. And you need to reroute your, your anger to somewhere else and not Annalise. But Nate is not trying to hear it. Michaela informs Oliver and Connor that, hey, Annalise is going to know that it's us. Annalise won her motion, and what that means is that we're getting put into the forefront of knowing more information. And Annalise informs Bonnie and Frank that, hey, these documents are showing that this is all going to be geared back towards me. It goes back three years and all the way back to the murder case in the first degree of Sam. So Annalise is saying, hey, I've got to ask them to come over. And then she receives confirmation after they've thought about it that they're going to come over and see her in one hour. 
But before that, they inform the FBI that, hey, what do we do in this situation? But the FBI reminds them that the agreement that they have, they have to testify against Annalise. More details about the night that Asher was killed. While Asher is taking a voice memo and he finishes, he tries to email the video, but is interrupted by a knock at the door. This is someone he trusts because when he opens the door, he lets them in. Across the hall, Gabriel hears the commotion and looks under the door and possibly sees the killer. So before Annalise can meet up with Oliver, Michaela, and Connor, Annalise's mother, she plays as if she has no idea what's going on and that she has dementia. She's playing this clueless role about what's going on. When Annalise puts her mother into another room, Annalise makes it known that she's always been in their corner and she's always protected them, knowing that she hasn't done anything to anyone. And she wants them to remind them of that. And she says, hey, You've trusted me to protect you, but at this point, we need to trust each other. Annalise tells Bonnie and Frank that, hey, these kids have turned against me, and I have evidence that they've turned against me, and I don't know why they've done that. She then finds out that the house fire information that the FBI knows concerning the house had to have been given by Nate because in a previous season, Nate shows documentation that he's going to give the FBI. He gives it to Annalise like, hey, this is what I'm going to give the FBI. This is the information. And we do see the article that concerns the arson of her house. And this is something that Mrs. Price is informed about when she talks to the FBI. We then have an endearing scene where Annalise's mother sits on the couch with her and says that you're angry because I didn't protect you as a ch child. You try to protect everyone around you because you want to be that parent that you thought I wasn't. And Annalise says, mom, this is not your fault. You did everything that you could. And she says, no, I wasn't there when you needed me. A critical point in your life. So this is what's going on. This is the way you work. No wonder why you're so excited exhausted. You feel like nobody else is in your corner and you don't have to feel that way. It's time that you start looking out for yourself. Gabriel goes to the FBI and says that he saw the killer and he thinks he knows who killed Asher, Laurel. Annalise informs Bonnie and Frank that Nate was the one who gave the FBI the article concerning the house fire and that it's impossible that they could just keep going as if nothing's wrong. And she says, hey, now is your chance to run. If you want to run, now is the chance to protect yourself. But Bonnie and Frank, they say, hey, we are in this together. And Annalise puts on her game fighting face and says that if they're going to charge me with arson, if they think that I'm this killer and such a terrible person, then let's give them a run for their money. Michaela, Oliver, and Connor, they get a call from the FBI agent and he tells Michaela that, hey, I have something that you may want to see. And it is the video that Asher recorded before his death. He leaves this message saying that I wouldn't change a thing. I love you all, but don't be mad at me. I chose my family over everything else and that I hope you understand. He even tells Michaela that he wanted to propose to her that night because he loved her. And he felt that in their relationship, they could surpass all of the crap that was going on in their lives. So he goes on to leave this message for them saying, don't be mad at me. This is why I did what I did. The final scene, Gabriel goes to the FBI to report who he thinks killed Asher. He tells them that he thinks it's Laurel. But then he has a recollection of when someone enters the room, he sees someone that's not Laurel. 
He recognizes certain facial features and we see that it is an FBI agent. She does have dark hair and she does kind of have the likeness of Laurel, but it's all coming back to Gabriel. It's all coming back to his memory and what he saw that night. Later on, we do see him go to Connor, Oliver, and Michaela's home, but then he informs them that, hey, I think I know who killed Asher. It's the FBI. And that is the end of the episode. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments below and who you think is behind wanting to kill Asher after them giving information. Really, really interesting. Let me know what you think. I'll put my guesses in the comments below. I'll see you for next week. Until next time, hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. Also, follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, officialbun underscore E. Until next time, bye!